Hey guys, welcome back. Here's the uh, demo of the uh, voltmeter that we're going to be that we've been messing with, the digital voltmeter. Um, basically, we've got our LCD screen. Thanks again to DC Elect for uh, donating all of his uh, components. This has been a great help. I've been using them something fierce. Here's the some of the capacitors he's donated. This is one of the LM7805 voltage regulators he's donated and this is one of the LCD screens he's donated. So thanks again. Um, they're a huge help. I got more stuff coming that's going to be using that stuff. So thank you very much again. Alright, let's go ahead and get into it. Here's our potentiometer that we're going to basically measure the voltage off of. Uh, again, our regulator. And then here's our LCD screen. And here I used uh, just the resistors for the contrast. That's what these two resistors are for, is to set the contrast for the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to power it on up. Oop, there we go. Power it on up. And we've got our our voltage and our 4 volts, just like our software did. And then if we, I'm going to go this way with it so it doesn't, if we change, our voltage goes down. Now, to be sure that it's working properly, we're going to zoom out. And I'm going to grab uh, a meter. Let's plug this in real quick. And we're going to set a meter down here. Let's see if we can see it. There we go. Pop up a meter. Let me scoot this all over so you can see both. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, all right. Keep both meters. Okay, let's make sure our meter's working. I'm going to touch 12 volts. We should. Okay, there's 12 volts. All right. So now, where we're at is, look here, looking through the viewfinder is not the same. Okay, we got about 3.6, and remember since I, I made it where the software basically just rounds it off, um, it's just going to do just the whole number, just the integer value. Of course, me wiggling around isn't helping. Uh, let me see if I can get a solid voltage measurement here. Okay, whoop, let's get the cord out of the way. Okay, 3.8, and then when I get to 3. Point, I start get to 2, and there it is. Then it changed to 2. Then I get to, so I'm moving it around. I get to 1 volt. So there's 1. Of course, I'm not a very, I'm not being very stable here. And then as we go back up, 2, and then as we go back up, and once we hit 3, it'll shift to 3. 3. There it is. Which are pretty much we're kind of all over the face because I'm wiggling the the pot and I'm wiggling the deal. But basically, you see, you get the idea though. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then there's four, and then it changed to four as well. So there you go. There's your voltmeter, at least a single integer voltmeter that will change with the uh, the integers, as you can see. So it's basically rounding off that, that, that point 0.9 or whatever, it's rounding that, or not really rounding, it's just cutting it off. Remember, because we typecasted, so it's going to truncate that off. So see, when I get to two, uh, 2.5 or so, well, if I can hold the probe still. Well, if I can hold the probe still, give me a minute. There we go, two and a half. See, it won't trip until it actually becomes three. See, even 2.9, it's not going to. Then once we get to about 3, 2.99 or so, it's going to go to 3. So basically mine is accurate um, to yeah, probably a, a hundredth of a volt or something like that is where it's starting to get off. You know, So if I go down a little bit, see it's go, it goes back to 2, but if I get right there at the threshold, it's, well, I went over, but that's basically what you got going on. So that's essentially our little voltmeter that we got going on. and. Uh, like I said, again, you might want to choose a chip that has a little bit more memory than the 676. If you want to go ahead and do a, uh, you know, put the decimals on there and get it out to tenths, maybe hundredths of a volt, you might uh, want to do a, a bigger memory chip because you'll have to do some uh, hex to ASCII conversions or whatever to get all that. Um, you may have to use floating point numbers, at least it'd be easier to use floating point numbers. Um, you don't have to, but uh, you'll have to create some own, your own functions and use the modulus division function and basically move decimals by multiplying by 10 and then modulously dividing by 10 and doing stuff like that to strip off the decimal digits. You can do that. Um, 
those of you that want to, you could you could let me know um, if you want to see how that would be done. I could uh, um, throw this back together with like let's say uh, an 886 or something like that that has like 8192 uh, words and you know in, of, of uh, program memory and stuff like that. And I could I could show you something like that. Some of the little tips and tricks of using uh, the modulus division. Which those of you that don't know what that is, modulus division basically means that it returns the remainder. So if you were wanting like 2.6 and you wanted the six. What you could do is you could multiply it by 10 first to make it instead of 2.6, 26, and then modulously divide by 10. And of course, 10 will go into 26 two times, you know, evenly, and then it'll have six left over. The six will be the remainder. So that's how you basically get the 0.6 is you multiply by 10 and then modulously divide by 10, and then you get, you'll get the six as the remainder. So there's different little tricks and stuff like that. Um, let me know if you guys want to see that. Um, I've kind of explained it. I think you guys could probably take it from there. But um, anyway, that's basically what this is. Um, keep subscribing. Keep uh, sending me comments because I like to see uh, what you guys think of all this as well as answer any questions you may have. Um, go ahead and, uh, yeah, keep coding. Keep having fun because that's what it's all about is having fun. So I'll see you guys later. Thanks a lot.